So if you haven't seen already, today there was a new gameplay trailer release that focused on all the new stasis subclasses. This wasn't a full subclass reveal, those are going to be revealed individually on a later date. The Warlock first on September 1st, the Titan second on September 3rd, and the Hunter on September 8th. And in this video, I'm not really here to do so much as speculate to what exactly these abilities are doing, although I do think the trailer gave us a pretty clear picture of what the abilities are doing of course we'll see them in depth though with the full subclass reveals but i'm here to talk about the overarching idea of what stasis means for destiny 2 and most importantly to me and most specifically to me what does it mean for destiny 2 pvp so i'm gonna have the b-roll footage from the press package here just rolling there's some old gameplay here there's some newer gameplay here as well from the stasis subclasses so you guys can watch that in the gameplay in the background as i talk about my thoughts on stasis and what it means for destiny 2 pvp because this is a pretty hot topic this is a controversial topic because stuns and cc's or crowd controls is often a touchy subject for many because in fps games in the past they may not have been maybe implemented the best but essentially they're a touchy subject and a lot of people are saying that pvp is going to be kind of no balance and this is going to be crazy because these have the potential to be very very oppressive Essentially, by freezing an enemy, you are limiting the ability they have to interact with you. Because I think in any multiplayer game, whether it's a video game or a card game or whatever, anytime you're playing a multiplayer with another person and one person doesn't really get to interact with your plays, it becomes probably relatively unfun for that one person that can't interact or have some sort of plays on their own to serve as a counterplay and have that go back and forth. So it's easy to see why a lot of people would be concerned with this because again, it has high potential to limit the counterplay and be potentially quite oppressive. But let's take a step back for a second. The most important thing, the most valuable thing, one of the craziest things in Destiny 2, especially now more than ever, is movement. A lot of people associate a lot of the skill in this game with the ability to move and fly around and we see top tree dawn blades zooming around the map and we see stompy hunters bouncing their heads off ceilings and playing crazy vertical space movement is crazy sprint speed is crazy slide distance is crazy your ability to flow and dive into engagements is nuts and incredibly valuable right now the first thing that i see when i see stasis is okay so we're not getting rid of that insane movement but we're gonna make it another play style that can have the ability to counter that crazy movement so Bungie actually published a new web page with an infographic about stasis that mentioned there are three dimensions, I guess, of stasis. It says command stasis, where there are stasis fields, the freeze effect, and then the shatter. So stasis field is probably the one that is the most interesting on this infographic to me because it says you can even the odds by slowing your enemies in stasis fields and there are some moments in the trailers that indicate that players look like they're moving quite drastically slower you see there is a part where a golden gun is in a grenade i believe and it's slowly walking and then it's hit by another ability and then it is frozen so that would be the freeze effect and then the other points in the trailer show that frozen targets with certain attacks will shatter. I assume they have to be frozen anyways. Every time they shatter, they're already frozen in the trailer as far as I can tell. So I don't think this is so much going to promote a quote unquote campy playstyle, but it certainly is going to be a counter to the hold forward fly in playstyle. No matter what, I think that good players are always going to maintain a degree of aggression. It's favorable to do that in an FPS game. You want to be the aggressing team and play your advantage at as many points as possible. Camping back is not something that you want to be doing because you risk getting collapsed on. However, there are scenarios in Destiny 2 because of sometimes the lack of objectives and even the nature of the structure of the maps. It does promote kind of a stalemate until a sniper kind of gets a pick or someone is able to get a pick. But again, I don't think that people are just going to be camping with this. I think the best players with these abilities are actually going to still play aggressively, but be really proficient at baiting players 
out and getting them to overcommit and proceed to punish them very harshly with the new stasis abilities. I also think these stasis abilities are going to allow players to counter some of the players that like to, for lack of a better term, quote unquote, fly in, be very overly aggressive without much else caution to it, just flying in in that quick bait and switch while the teammates are putting primary, they are flying in with a shotgun or whatever else in whatever way. I think the stasis is going to give you a way of punishing those players or slowing them down from making some of those on a dime over a aggressive plays and it's going to force some of those players to really think to themselves that they need to lead and start with their fundamental primary gunplay before trying to commit to a play like that. This segues into the thought that I think just the presence, just the sheer presence of these stasis abilities in Destiny 2 is going to fundamentally change the way people play. I think people are going to realize that they're not going to be able to get away with some of that simple hold forward, throw myself at people anymore you're gonna have to think that there needs to be a little bit more thought process before doing that otherwise you might get caught and you might get punished i do think it's gonna naturally slow down the crucible a little bit but in a good way where making those really aggressive plays and movements is gonna take a lot more thought process a lot more deliberately good movement and a lot more confident decisions to be pushing with your team or in the right scenarios because a mindless push does have more risk in potentially getting punished with abilities like this being existent in the game. This really reminds me and I'm going to make another Yu-Gi-Oh comparison to a card when it was released in Yu-Gi-Oh called Nibiru the Primal Being and it's this what's called hand trap a card that you can play when your opponent summons more than five monsters in a turn and the reason why this is significant is because there are these combo decks at the time that were insanely strong because they would be insanely aggressive just summon way over over five monsters up until they have this board this this massive unbreakable board that if you're going against it you know you lost and you're not playing the game and after that card nibiru came out regardless of its overall effectiveness combo players have to respect it and play differently as a result they need to think about in their combos are they playing into that five summons is there going to be a choke point where they do not have an answer for it and it will end their turn and their combo can they bring something out early on that can stop it so it's going to require more thought from those aggressive players in Destiny 2 just with the sheer presence of these abilities to put more thought into their decision making of when they choose to be aggressive versus not and I think that's going to separate hopefully the better players that like that fast paced aggressive playstyle from the ones that are just mindlessly holding forward. But at the same time like I said I do think it's going to open up a little bit more to those players that want to play a little slower a little bit more methodical and bait players and then punish them very harshly so there's going to be an interesting tug of war between the two types of play styles i think i think a good relevant example that we can make right now is thinking about sniper players we have the top dawn blade type player that likes to zoom around the map get to angles quickly be really aggressive with their team and get to spawn kills quickly but there's also room now for snipers that want to be able to move with their team play a little bit slower but still be holding effective angles but have defense against people that might be rushing them and focus more on baiting than anything i don't know i think that's a really cool potential dynamic that you can have one type of weapon player like a sniper play in two different polar opposite ways but i might know what you're thinking we're about nine minutes into this video and you might be thinking well this is rather optimistic because what if this isn't balanced correctly and that's the nerve-wracking part about this that is the nerve-wracking part about stasis and pvp is because it has such high potential to be really oppressive since it's kind of eliminating the interaction between a player and another player it could go either way it could be maybe not significant enough and not good enough to take advantage of at a high level or maybe even be too difficult to pull off that you're not going to utilize it enough and it feels like a waste or the polar opposite of this is maybe it's too easy to use and it just freezes people way too easily and you have the whole crucible running around very easily just freezing each other which could get really frustrating really quickly and i think it's fair to say that most people don't want new subclasses the first time in a while that we've gotten new subclasses to be useless but at the same time a lot of people don't want to be frozen all the time on demand and very easily in pvp it really is a crazy balance 
and the sweet spot is i think a thin one that's gonna be hard to strike but i have faith in bungie that they will get that balance in my personal opinion i believe the potency of these stasis abilities needs to be correlate or at least in line with the risk or investment associated with them for example, if there were to be an ability that freezes someone very quickly or with very little counterplay, it would have to be really difficult to pull off, almost be like a skill shot, so it would be actually a respectable moment in a way because the risk was so high and the skill demand was high and the reward matches that that's required for it. Or if let's say it's easier to do to have it a bit more consistent, then it can't be quite as potent in my personal opinion. That segues into a small discussion about counterplay. I do think these abilities need some form of counterplay, some way that the opposing player can stop you maybe from freezing them and basically fight back before it's too late and have a reasonable window of time to do that within, I don't know, the confines of how exactly these abilities are going to work. And we don't really know how these are going to work yet, so it's hard to say, but some form of counterplay, I think, is important. Considering we've gotten only theatrical and choreographed trailers, I'm sure counterplay isn't at the forefront of this, but I hope to hear more about that in the future and how they are balancing this or you know giving players an ability to hopefully fight back or counter these abilities as well since they seem like they have some pretty high potential to them i think we've seen some pretty cool new abilities that look pretty awesome i think they visually look amazing and i'm excited to try them out just because they look and probably feel really cool to do there's some really unique stuff here the supers look of course very very unique but a lot of the grenades making walls making those stasis fields or whatever they're called the stasis zones we have the warlock wand which looks pretty crazy the hunter shurikens we got titans flying through the air with their punches like doing detroit smash or using one for all or something you know what i mean like really really cool things so i'm excited to see how these work i'm not trying to really speculate on what these do much some of these abilities look like they were freezing instantly some of them look like they weren't i'm not too sure and like i said these are all trailers so there's not really much for us to go on so we have to wait for the full subclass reveals to see how these are exactly going to work but i think the idea of this is really cool i think the idea is something good and i think that it'll actually bring something really unique to the game a completely different way of playing something that'll force other players to change the way that they play i think personally for the better and have a little bit more of a conscious thought process and i think that's good for the game overall but of course like i said it rests on the appropriate balance and that's the big thing here and we can only wait and see so guys those are my thoughts on stasis Hope you guys enjoyed. Now I'm going to plug my Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Drewskis. If you want to see me more often, I am streaming pretty much every day. So you guys can check me out there if you want to hang out with me. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.